Psalms 110, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through, the, through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We enjoyed a good singing, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we had singing that brought conviction, singing that brought confirmation, and singing that brought comfort. Thank you, Lord. We, Lord, we enjoyed the testimonies. Lord, thank you for people sharing. You said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And Lord, we're thankful for those that bore their hearts and, Lord, shared the goodness of God through their testimonies. Now, Lord, thank you for the precious Word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our paths. Lord, it is forever settled in heaven, and it is the final and absolute authority of our lives. And God, we thank you for it. Now, Lord, as we uh, open the bread of life one more time, I pray that you'd bless the reading of it. I pray that it will find itself in the hearts of hungry folks looking to be filled with the righteousness of God. Father, I pray for those working with the children on the other side and those working with the teens, you'd bless their efforts. I pray for those young people, Lord, you'd put a hedge around them. Lord, they're faced with things that when we were their age didn't even know existed and they're bombarded with it every day. And so, God, I pray you'd insulate them, you'd help them. And God, I certainly pray for those that haven't been saved, they'd get saved while they're at a young age. And then, Father, I pray for the dear saints of God. You'd edify them, you'd do great things for them. Lord, they uh, carry the mail. They face a lot. They, Lord, hedge away for even the young people coming up behind them. So, Lord, protect them. Lord, use them. Help them to be a light to this dark world. Help them to be salt to this unsavory world that, God, we might see Jesus Christ reign in our country once again. God, send revival these days. May it start even here tonight. And God, do glorious things for your glorious name. Father, we'll not fail to bless you and praise you for what you do. For it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to several things. I want you to notice, first of all, the position of Christ right now. Look again at verse number 1. It says, The Lord said unto my Lord. Isn't it amazing when God speaks to God? Yeah. You better pay attention when God speaks to God. Something good's about ready to happen. We find that the Lord, the Father, said unto my Lord, the Son, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Can I say that David, in years gone by, is inspired to write about something that would happen generations after he left this world uh, that we can see that transpired some 2,000 years ago. Uh, in the Bible, amazing. Uh, uh, the book of Colossians, Paul wrote, uh, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God. Uh, Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down uh, at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, you see, when Jesus uh, ascended back into glory, uh, we know in Acts chapter number 1, uh, verse number 8, he said that uh, uh, to his disciples uh, uh, that after the Holy Ghost would come upon them, they'd be witnesses unto Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, and then he decided to go on back to glory. Uh, and the angels uh, said to his disciples, Ye men of Galilee, uh, why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus uh, that went up from you to uh, 
shall come again in like manner. Hey, that's what we're looking for, the coming again of the Lord. Uh, but friends, when he went back to glory, the Father said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down in my right hand. Uh, and that's where he is. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. The only time we have in the Word of God where he got up is when Stephen was martyred. Uh, he said, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. Uh, hey, when Jesus uh, was about ready to ascend, he told his disciples, uh, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, in my Father's house so many mansions, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Uh, hey, Jesus stood up to receive Stephen in the glory. Uh, the only time he gets up from the throne uh, is to welcome home one of his children children what a blessing uh, we see the position of Christ right now he's seated at the father's right hand uh, I want you to notice the power of his coming look in verse number two he says the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion rule thou in the midst of thine enemies thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power uh, and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. Uh, my dear friends, we know the next great prophetic event in Scripture is the rapture of the church or the translation of the saints or the catching away of the saints uh, when uh, uh, the Lord shall step out uh, and with the shout of an archangel with the trump of God uh, 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 he's going to uh, step out in the clouds and the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him uh, and then we which are alive shall be caught up together with them and so shall we ever be with the Lord what a blessing Amen. but that's not his second coming he doesn't come back to the earth then we rise to meet him and then there'll be great tribulation on this earth for seven years. Uh, and at the end of that great tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, all nations will turn against Israel. Uh, 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 the devil's uh, 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 son, uh, uh, the Antichrist, has an all-out uh, onslaught uh, uh, trying to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Uh, 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 but I've got good news. Uh, when it looks like Israel's just about done for, uh, hey, he who is uh, will come. Uh, and you and I are coming back with him on white horses. Uh, his name is faithful and true. Uh, out of his mouth shall go a sharp two-edged sword. Uh, and he's going to slay the enemies of Israel. Uh, and he'll uh, set up his throne uh, on the throne of David. Uh, and he'll rule and reign for a thousand years with a rod of iron uh, in the beauty of holiness. Uh, and we'll rule and reign with him. Uh, Hey, neighbor, don't get too down. We win, trust me, huh? Yeah, we are. That peculiar people, that treasure we talked about this morning, that chosen generation, that royal priesthood, uh, we will rule and reign with God. Uh, uh, it amazes me how many churches have fighting amongst the members. Uh, when you look around, this is not your enemy. These are kings and priests in God. Uh, these are folks that are going to rule and reign with Christ. Uh, what a blessing to be among the choicest people on the earth. Uh, we see the position of Christ right now. We see the power of His coming. I want you to notice the priesthood of His crowning. Look at verse number 4. The Bible says, The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Boy, I'd love to get into all this right here. Hebrews uh, uh, comments on this as well. Can I say that Melchizedek is a man that Abraham uh, came in contact with? Abraham went uh, to recover uh, 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 his nephew Lot, uh, and all Lot's herdsmen had been taken hostage, uh, and Abraham took his men and went and took care of business. Uh, and he comes back with all the spoils of war, uh, has Lot and all of his herdsmen, uh, and he comes to a place called Salem. Uh, uh, you and I would know the place uh, as Jerusalem today. Uh, and in Salem, uh, he is so taken with the king by the name of Melchizedek, uh, he said he had no beginning or ending 
King of days and he was a king and a priest and Abraham was so taken by this king that he gave him a tithe of all the spoils of war. Hey, can I just say something? Whenever you come in contact with the Lord, he'll impress you so much he'll even get your pocketbook. Hey, but can I say, Melchizedek in that day was Jesus appearing in the Old Testament. Hey, he just didn't start uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, he's of no ending and no beginning of days. Uh, he's always been. Uh, he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, and he stepped out of glory. Uh, stepped down there to Salem just at the time uh, Abraham was coming through. Uh, and it so impressed Abraham. We are still talking about Melchizedek today. Uh, and we find the priesthood of his crowning. Uh, he was so impressed, he made such an impression, Abraham did, that David's writing about Melchizedek. Uh, uh, the writer of Hebrews writes about Melchizedek. Uh, and the whole book's about Melchizedek. His name is Jesus. Uh, we see the priesthood of his coming. That's why the Lord doesn't repent when he calls him that. And why would God the Father refer to the Son as an earthly man? Mm, he didn't. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Uh, but then I want you to notice the punishment in his conquering. Look at verse number 5. The Lord at, that, uh, at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. Can I say one prophecy says that the blood uh, from Armageddon will flow all the way to the bit of the horse's mouth. I don't know if you've ever been around horses, but that's a whole lot of blood in a valley to come up that high. It goes on to say, He shall wound the heads over many countries. You know why? Because He's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Yes, sir. But I'm not going to preach on any of that. I want to get to verse 7. Now keep in mind, we've showed you the Lord's position right now. We've showed that He's coming back literally this earth and He's going to reign in Jerusalem after the order of Melchizedek. We've shown that he is going to punish those that have stood against him and against his chosen people. Now with all that in mind, let's read verse 7 again. He shall drink of the brook in the way, therefore he shall lift up the head. If you read most commentators, they're going to say that the king and his coming gets so tired of whipping up all these heads of states and all these people and filling the valley full of dead bodies that he comes by a brook and he refreshes himself at the brook so he can continue on. Now hogwash. We're talking about the king of glory in a glorified body that will never tire. He doesn't slumber and sleep. Are you listening? He's not going to be so worn out from punishing folks that he's got to stop by and get refreshed. Uh, again, the problem with a lot of people that are smart, they don't know who Jesus really is. They comment on things they do not know. Hmm? Now, if you're talking about us, me getting out of bed, I've got to get refreshed with some water. But not the Lord. Hmm? And they're trying, as most commentators do, they're trying to bring God down to man's level. Can I help you with what Jesus Christ is seeking to do? He's trying to bring us up to His level. Uh, but I'm interested in the midst of the King of Glory absolutely judging and slaying kings and heads of states and uh, uh, setting up His kingdom and proving who He is. Why He stops by a brook and gets a drink of water. I'm interested in that. And I want to preach on the brook in the way. The brook in the way. Now can I say right now, he's thirsty. You see, when he hung on Calvary, he said, I thirst. And you know, they brought him a, a sponge filled with vinegar. He did not take it because that was a form of a painkiller. He did not dull his pain. He took his pain. He took his shame. Uh, he shed his blood to pay for our sins. Uh, but he said, I thirst. And he's still thirsting. What's he thirsting for? 
Can I say, first of all, he's thirsting to redeem sinners. He came seeking to save that which was lost. Uh, uh, there is a thirst that is unquenched in the heart of God uh, uh, for every sinner to repent uh, and get born again. That's what he's thirsting for. Uh, that's why uh, uh, the church isn't going down. She's going up. Uh, that's why the gates of the hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Uh, that's why he still has lighthouses across this globe uh, uh, shining forth the light, the gospel, uh, uh, letting folks know Jesus saves uh, Jesus saves. Uh, that's why Miss Rhonda, uh, he had your boss ask you uh, uh, what you did last Sunday uh, so you can tell he went to church uh, that there's something more important in this world than a football team. Uh, his name is Jesus uh, and he thirsts uh, how to save sinners uh, and change their life for now and all eternity. Uh, he's thirsting to redeem sinners. He's thirsting to rescue prodigals. It's not God's will for prodigals to stay in hog pens. Uh, it's God's will for the prodigals to get back to the Father's house. Uh, and He's thirsting. Uh, he puts people in people's way. Uh, he puts uh, uh, things on people's minds and hearts uh, in order for them to miss the Father's house. Uh, so they'll get out of their hog pens, uh, get back home where they belong, uh, and once again enjoy the blessings of God. Uh, He's thirsting to redeem sinners. He's thirsting to rescue prodigals. Uh, he's thirsting to revive the saints. I promise you God wants revival. I believe He stands at the banister of heaven just waiting to pour it out. He's just waiting for us to want it as much as He wants to give it. When we want it more than we don't want it, we'll have it. See, we want it, but we want it on our terms. It don't come on our terms. It comes on His terms. And when we want it bad enough to lay our terms aside and ask Him just to send it, we'll have it. He's longing and thirsting to revive the saints. You can believe what you want. I believe He's thirsting for the rapture. I've heard it all my life. People say, if the Lord tarries His coming, He's not tearing His coming. Uh, matter of fact, He said, I will not tarry. I mean the, the nanosecond uh, that there's the twinkle in the father's eye uh, and the son sees it uh, when the father's about ready to say, go get your bride. Uh, he's a coming. Uh, he's not going to say, Father, let's just put it off. Uh, he's a longing uh, uh, to put his arms around us. Uh, he's a longing for us to put on that wedding garment. Uh, he's a longing uh, uh, for us to see what he's going to prepare. Uh, he's thirsting for the rapture of the church. Uh, he doesn't like you and I facing what we face anymore, and we like facing what we face. And he's longing to deliver us out of this mess. But His love for sinners is what's keeping us here. Mm. Can I say this? He thirsts for reverence. God made man to worship God. The whole duty of man is to worship and reverence God. And he's thirsting for him to be revered the way he should be revered. Can you imagine what this world would be like if everybody that claims to be a Christian would be as excited about the Lord as Cincinnati is about this football game next week? Can you imagine? I mean, this, this city's gone crazy. And I understand that they haven't had much to hope for for 30 years. Uh, and I like sports as much as the next person, but I love Jesus. And can you imagine what this world be like? I mean, it, it, they don't think it's anything peculiar about these folks losing their mind about a football team. But if you tell them you went to church three times in the last week, they think you're done slap crazy. Can you, can you imagine if everybody that named the name of Christ got that excited about Jesus? Hmm? I mean, do you notice they're all out buying uniforms? Wouldn't it be amazing if God's people would put on the whole armor of God? Put on that heavenly uniform? Well, I, hey, I go to restaurants on Sunday and I look around thinking nobody goes to church anymore. Do you ever see what people look like? A bunch of bums. Come out of so-called church looking like a bum. huh? Hey, God gave His best for us. I think we ought to give our best back to God. I just believe that. Uh, we ought to look like Christians, ought to walk like Christians, ought to talk like Christians, ought to be excited like a Christian. huh? They were first called Christians at Antioch because they looked like Christ. They sounded like Christ. They walked like Christ. God help us to be excited. Well, I'm not going to get on all that stuff. Be here all night. I'm interested 
and why he'll thirst that day. Mm. There's something about that fountain. That brook he stops by. There's just something about it. Hmm. And so, let me look at the brook in the way. The brook he drinks of in the way is a fountain of freshness. I'm going to show you in a minute, this isn't the first time he drinks from that brook. And there's something about the freshness of that water. Can I say there's some places that I've been able to go and partake of what they serve as food. You just can't compare it to anything else. Hmm? Lord willing, in a few weeks, I'm going to be in Shelby, North Carolina. You already know where I'm going. I'm going to the fish place. Huh? There's just something about it. It's not fancy. I mean, you eat off paper plates and plastic forks. But there's something about the food. I'm going back. Huh? You all know every now and then I get a hunkering and a hankering for some ribs. I'm going to the boathouse. Hmm? There's just no boy. Can I, can I let you in on a little secret? I don't eat ribs anywhere else in the world. I'll be somewhere. Some preacher wants some ribs. Nah, I'm okay. I'm good. Because when you've had the best, why settle for less? Uh, now, I'm going to tell you, I can't afford it. But every now and then, I get to go to Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse. It's hard for me to eat meat anywhere else. This, I don't know what they do. I don't know if they rub it in the floor. I don't know what they do with that meat. But it's something in the butter pie. Yeah, I said butter pie. First time they said try the butter pie. I said, a butter pie? There ain't no way, man. I remember when Chloe Beth was little, she'd eat a stick of butter at a time. But I'm thinking, that's gross. But he's too far up there. What about that butter pie? It's delicious, isn't it? I can eat my weight in butter pie. You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? There are places where you go that leaves an impression. Some bad. Huh? There are some places, the barbecue review. Yeah, I don't care if I ever go back there. Uh, Brother Bob used to work with a man and said, this place is as good as Montgomery Inn. So Miss Sonny had a doctor point. I went up to meet him, make sure everything was okay. He said, Brother Duck, did his credit. He said, I've never been there. But this guy I work with says it's as good as Montgomery Inn. It's just down the street. Want to go? I said, sure, Brother Bob. Mistake. When you walk in and you see them serving it like they do in the Army, plop, plop, run, run. The barbecue review did not get a good review from me, but I ate it. I had to hold my nose, but I ate it. But can I say, there are some places you can't wait to go back. There are some things that it just impresses you so much that it does something for you. Even down the future, it comes right back. Have you ever just be walking down, God help you, in Walmart or walking somewhere, and there's some music on, and it takes you right back to when that was? Hmm. Huh? Every now and then I hear some Motown, man. And I'm back in that 1974 Nova having a time. Are you listening? Well, I'm trying to say, sometimes something will take you back. This water was a fountain of freshness. And in the midst of Jesus uh, taking names, are you listening? Uh, in the midst of Him uh, uh, settling the score, uh, He comes by that fountain and says, Wait a second, uh, there's something about that fountain. Uh, it's fresh. Uh, there's nowhere else on earth like it. Uh, and He gets a hold of it. Uh, can I say, uh, there was a fountain filled with blood. Uh, there's no place like it. Uh, it's fresh. Uh, every now and then in the heat of the battle, uh, you don't realize uh, uh, you need uh, uh, to get back to that fountain uh, and get cleansed. To get some help. I'm glad. Hallelujah. He made a fountain of freshness for you and I. And I say something else about this fountain. He drinks of the brook in the way because it's familiar. 
He just doesn't see a body of water. I imagine while he's uh, slaying the kings of the earth, he goes by a bunch of water. But this one particular brook, he stops off at and gets a drink in the way. Can I say it's a familiar book? In John chapter number 18 and verse number 1, the Bible says when Jesus had spoken these words, uh, he went forth uh, with his disciples, listen, over the brook Kedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered, and his disciples, uh, listen to verse 2, and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times uh, resorted thither with his disciples. Uh, you see, this place was familiar. Uh, it was by a garden uh, where he used to go with his disciples. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, he goes back to this familiar place. Uh, and he goes back uh, and he remembers the good times with his disciples. Uh, uh, he remembers that fresh water in the brook. Uh, hey, I'm glad uh, uh, there's a water that's familiar. Uh, every now and then we get to go back uh, and we get to learn at the Savior's feet. Uh, and we get a drink of water from another world. World. Uh, I'm glad it's familiar to us. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, I'm not drinking from a strange well, uh, but I'm drinking from a well of living water uh, that bubbles up within us. Uh, can I say this brook in the way? It's familiar to him. Uh, it ought to be familiar to us. Uh, can I say it's a place of cleansing? It's a place of communion. And it's a covert place. We can hide under the shadow of his wings at this place. And the enemy can't find us. Uh, can I say the brook in the way? The brook he drinks of in the way, it's a fountain of freshness. It's familiar. But it's also foundational. It's something that can be built upon. Can I say the word of God is referred to uh, as the washing of the water word of God? It's foundational. You can build your life on it. It's not sinking sand. Hey, He's the living Word. Uh, and the written Word's an extension of Him. Uh, hey, it's a solid rock you can build your life on. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ, that fountain that was opened, uh, filled with His blood, is a foundational way. Uh, hey, it's something you can build your life on. Uh, hey, without it, you're not going to heaven. What a blessing. This fountain was foundational. It can be built upon. Can I say it's fundamental? It's essential. Yeah. It's necessary. Uh, you don't uh, uh, take a steady diet of this, it'll show out on you. You'll be weak. Matter of fact, you're going to be judged by every word of this book. There's over 773,000 words in the Word of God. You're going to be judged by every one of them. It's fundamental. You better know it because you'll be judged by it. But it's fundamental. It's essential. It's your lifeline to heaven. We speak to God in prayer. He speaks to us through His Word. Uh, you'll find a verse uh, that will comfort you in time of trouble. You'll find a verse that will uh, 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 give you exactly what you need uh, for direction in your life. Uh, it's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Uh, you'll find a promise uh, that will propel you above the obstacles of the world. Uh, uh, you'll find uh, escape in the Word of God from the snares of the devil. Uh, you'll find through the Word of God a faith that will bring down strongholds uh, and will uh, uh, give you the victory no matter what you face. Uh, it's fundamental. Uh, there's a push to do away with fundamental churches in America. Well, they're fighting in vain. The only one that'll close a fundamental church is the people within it. Mm. Uh, the Lord never planted a church to stop the church. Uh, but there's a group coming up that are trying to apologize for the world for what we've stood for for 2,000 years. They're called Reformed Baptists. Well, I didn't have to reform. I got regenerated. I got reborn, not reformed. Uh, I do not apologize over what my granddaddy used to preach. I'm not apologizing for my godly heritage, Brother Bob. I don't apologize for it. I, I'm glad that uh, there's been hard preaching in my life. If not, I'd have been apt to stray. And you know what hard preaching does? It keeps you centered. Uh, 
Thank God for a preacher that'll stand and preach the Word of God. Uh, thank God for men that have backbones like saw logs that don't apologize for the Word of God uh, and stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord. That's what we need. Right. We don't need these little sissified preachers in skinny dreams with their shirts untucked walking around apologizing. Don't apologize for me. I'm not sorry for the Word of God. Uh, it's fundamental. But I'm interested in this brook in the way. Let me say this lastly. This brook that he drinks of in the way can still be found. I'm glad it's forever settled. I'm glad he says, Seek and ye shall find. I'm glad there's hope for the hopeless. I'm glad there's strength for the weak. I'm glad there's help that comes from the hills for those that look for it. Uh, I'm glad it can still be found today. Uh, I believe verse 7 in there is just a verse that gives all men from all history hope that there is a place where you can still get a cool drink in the midst of a hot desert. And I'm glad for the house of God where we can come and get a drink of water. We can come and get some sustenance for our soul. And when we go on the job next, tomorrow, and when we go through the world the next week, we have hope. We've been satisfied with something the world can't satisfy us with. You know, the devil's tried to imitate everything that God has, but he can't imitate what Jesus Christ will do for your soul. Thanks be unto God that this fountain, this brook, can still be found. When is the last time you was thankful? You still got a place you can come get a drink? When is the last time you was thankful for the water of the Word of God? When is the last time you was thankful that Jesus shows us through example once again that it's okay to stop in the midst of everything going on around you and take a good drink? It goes on to say, and he lifted up his head. Some of you might have come in this weekend because kind of beat down. Why don't you get your good drink? Tomorrow you lift your head again. You see, first he'll lift your heart, and then he lifts your head. Uh, and what a blessing to know there is a place where you can get a drink. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you want to come and thank the Lord. Maybe you want to come tell him you love him. Maybe he's laid something on your heart you need to talk to him about. Maybe he's laid somebody on your heart you need to come talk to him about. Maybe in being sensitive right now, God spoke to your heart. Maybe there's somebody here tonight you just need to go and put your arms around them, tell them you appreciate them. That might be what they need in their way. They might need a good word of encouragement. So you be real sensitive to mind God in this invitation. They're picking out a song. Let's pray, Father. Thank you for the brook in the way. Sometimes we get in our own way. God, I'm glad you've got a well of living water. You've got a brook of living water. You've got a word of living water that helps us. Now God, maybe somebody here tonight low, I pray you'd lift them up. You'd help them. Lord, there may be somebody struggling with something. Give them victory, Lord. Maybe somebody, Lord, got a burden. I pray that, God, you'd give them peace in the midst of their valleys. God, just do a work in people's hearts and lives. And God, if there's somebody here that needs encourage through a human agency, send somebody their way just to be good to them, and love on them. Might be exactly what they need to help them go on down the road for Jesus. Help us now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Lord, above all things, if there's somebody here lost without God, I pray they'd come give their heart and life to Jesus. God, do a work. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.